The Binding of Isaac was originally released to Newgrounds as a demo on October 8th, 2011, as a Flash game with very basic beginnings. With 196 items to collect on 6 different characters, The Binding of Isaac featured 20 different bosses, with Satan being the final boss, as well as having a very compelling story right from the game's beginnings. But little did Edmund McMillan know, this game would later become one of the most popular indie games of all time, and a lot of people, including myself, seriously can't get enough of the game. And today, we're going to be talking about the game's iceberg. This is the ultimate Binding of Isaac iceberg. Created by Reddit user FDipper well over two years ago now, this iceberg contains roughly 125 entries with six different individual tiers. Now let's be real, I don't think I need to explain the iceberg format, but something I will explain is how the confidence meter is going to work in this video. For my last two videos, I've been using health as a confidence meter from 0 to 5, but I'm kind of getting bored of doing the same thing, so this time I'm going to be using the D6 with a confidence range of 6 charges, just like how it is in the game. So for example, if I am 100% certain that I know what the entry refers to, then the charges will be all the way up, and if I don't, well, then it won't be. Okay, you get the gist of the format, so let's dive into the video. Edith Edith is an unused character that was featured in the Anti-Birth expansion, having an interesting mechanic where instead of moving traditionally, you had to move the character by teleporting to a cursor on the ground, similar to how items like Epic Fetus work. Edith was also limited to Soul and Black Hearts, but the character was ultimately scrapped from Anti-Birth because the developers didn't have enough time to properly balance the character before the expansion's release. Cow on a Trash Farm in May of 2021, a Twitter user by the name of DKD Warbung would unintentionally birth one of the most iconic jokes in the Isaac community when he replied to one of Edmund McMillan's tweets with this absolute gem of words. And the cow on a trash farm is not only a direct reference to this tweet, but the phrase also inspired this card in the Binding of Isaac card game Four Souls, and while the original tweet isn't up anymore, Warbung did later say that this tweet was the result of him being really drunk one night on Twitter. Reversed Chariot Card Easter Egg Normally when using a reversed Chariot card, Isaac becomes an invincible statue with 4 times the fire rate for 10 seconds, but the card has a secret in that the card has an extremely low chance for Isaac to actually become Edith during the duration of the card. Bertrand Related to Revelations Bertrand is a custom character that was created by the same people who made the Revelations mod, which is a massive two-chapter mod pack that has two new floors, 17 new bosses, 80 plus enemies, and 61 new items into the game. Bertrand was planned to be released alongside Chapter 3 of the mod, but ended up getting released early as a standalone character. Bertrand is unique in that he uses his head to kill enemies with a melee spin attack and a low-range head detach, and Bertrand also has a pip effect in that killing enemies with his fling attack gives you a permanent damage up, and in order to get more of them, you have to do one extra fling per floor the farther you go into the run. And as for Chapter 3 of Revelations, the mod doesn't seem to be released yet. There has been some footage shown off as well as the original soundtrack, but other than that, I guess we'll have to wait until it releases. Ed and Florian in-game Edmund McMillan and Florian Hemsel are the original creators of The Binding of Isaac, and Ultra Pride is actually a direct reference to Ed and Florian, with Ultra Pride representing Edmund McMillan, and the Pride Baby being Florian Hemsel. Challenge 45 Challenge 45 is unlocked by unlocking Tainted Eden, and the challenge consists of literally every single thing being determined by complete randomness, with items being randomly generated by randomly combining effects from other items in the game. Like with most runs in the game in general, this challenge can either be incredibly fun and easy, or it can be absolutely and utterly miserable. Completing the challenge unlocks the Reverse Temperance card, which forces Isaac to eat 5 random pills in quick succession. Closet Rooms Closet rooms are rare, small, dead-end rooms that were added in Afterbirth. The rooms often contain a unique arrangement of different kinds of pickups, and are only ever placed at a dead-end spot on the floor that you can find them in. Abortion Birth 
Abortion Birth is a mod pack that was initially released for Afterbirth Plus, which added over 500 items, 300 enemies, 15 more floors, and 50 bosses. The mod is famous for being a complete intentional mess to play, with nearly everything in the mod giving the player a massive disadvantage all throughout the game. A lot of the enemies are just unreasonably difficult, and the mod can also make it impossible to complete runs. Breakfasting Breakfasting is a term that is given to the event in which you manage to cycle through everything in an item pool with a rerolling item, causing every pedestal to turn into the breakfast item since there are no other items that you can get since you would have rerolled all of the possible items. This used to be a lot more common back before Repentance came out, and while it's not impossible to get now, it's just far less likely. The reason all the items default to breakfast is because of a bug confirmed by the developers. Dad's Key Dad's Key is an active item that is unlocked by collecting both of the key pieces from Gabriel and Uriel in a singular run. The item is able to open almost any doors in the game with ease, and I assume that the reason that it's on the iceberg could be a more symbolic meaning, maybe referring to the possibility that Dad's Key could be referencing Isaac's father leaving his mother, as the item can be used to escape from almost any situation in the game, but there is a possibility that this could mean something completely different. Henry. Henry is one of, if not the rarest enemy in the game, and the enemy will only appear in one specific room on draws. The enemy doesn't even attack Isaac, and all the enemy does is appear for around a second and then flushes himself away into the water forever. Henry is so rare that not only does he not appear in the bestiary, but the room that he spawns in also has around a 0.001% chance of spawning, making him the rarest enemy in the entire game by a very large margin. It's also worth noting that Isaac can take damage from Henry, but that's only if you manage to run directly into him, which is something that at least someone out there has done by accident. Greg the Egg Greg the Egg is a familiar from Fiendfolio, as well as having a standalone mod, that walks around the room, and will occasionally reward Isaac upon completing a room. Greg will also block enemy shots, and if he takes enough hits, he will crack open and drop a random familiar item. Rebirth Lost Unlock Method In the original Rebirth, the way that you unlocked the Lost was completely different from what the developers later changed it to in Afterbirth. In order to unlock the Lost now, you have to die in a sacrifice room with the missing poster trinket in your inventory, but the original unlock method was far more complicated. The original method consisted of a complicated set of puzzle pieces that was unfortunately ruined by data miners before the method was fully discovered, but if you put all of the pieces in the right order, it would give you instructions on how to unlock the character. First you would have to die to a mullaboom in Chapter 1 as Isaac, then have Magdalene die to a bomb in Caves, have Judas be killed by Mom, and then finally, have Azazel die to Satan, and if all of that was done right, then you would successfully unlock the Lost as a character. It is worth noting that every character could be done on seeded runs except for Azazel, but this was still infinitely more complicated than just dying in a sacrifice room with a trinket. Giant Poop The Giant Poop is a very rare poop that can only spawn in four different room layouts on the draws floor. The poop requires a large amount of tears to destroy, and drops many different pickups as a reward just like regular poop. Guppy, Tammy, and Cricket Guppy, Tammy, and Cricket are three of Edmund McMillan's real-life cats, which have items in the game that are direct references to the pets. Guppy has the most items, with Guppy also being the only cat with their own transformation in the game, and the eight items that are related to Guppy are Guppy's head, which is an active item that spawns two to four blue flies, Guppy's paw, which converts one red heart to three soul hearts, Guppy's collar, which gives a 50% chance to revive after death, Dead Cat, which sets your heart containers to one, but grants nine extra lives, Guppy's hairball, which is a familiar that can grow as well as be swung to damage enemies, Guppy's tail, which gives rooms a one in three chance of being replaced with a chest, and a two in nine chance of being replaced with nothing, Guppy's eye, which shows the contents of chests, fire, sacks, and keepers before being looted, and Kid's Drawing, 
which is a trinket that when held counts towards the guppy transformation. The other two cats have three different items, which includes Tammy's head, which is a reusable 8 tier burst active item, Cricket's head, which grants a 1.5 damage multiplier as well as a 0.5 damage up, and Cricket's body, which makes it so that when Isaac's tears disappear, they spawn four smaller tears, dealing half of Isaac's damage. Pog Baby. The Pog Baby is a co-op baby that was made to resemble the Pog Champ emote, and this is the same texture that's used in the Pog for Good Items mod. You can get the baby in game by using the Buddy in a Box item. Stillbirth Theory. This entry is most likely referring to the idea that Isaac may have had siblings, but the siblings were never born, hence the name Stillbirth Theory. The siblings in question relate to the brother Bobby and sister Maggie items, and these items could imply that Isaac was supposed to have siblings, but until something is confirmed about this, all we can really do is theorize. Baby Plum and Bambino are sparable. Baby Plum and Bambino are unique in that they are the only bosses that can be beaten without having to fight them in any way. For Baby Plum, if you don't attack them and instead dodge their projectiles for a while, then Baby Plum will eventually leave the room and will drop an item called the Plum Flute, which is an active item that can spawn a Baby Plum to fight for you for around 10 seconds. And as for Bambino, you pretty much just have to let him rob you of as many coins as he feels satisfied with until eventually leaving the room and rewarding you with a second boss item in the process. Lamb is Jesus. As the name of the entry suggests, people have had many theories about the lamb and what its interpretation in the Binding of Isaac is, and many people see the lamb as Isaac's interpretation of Jesus due to Jesus being called the lamb in the Bible, as well as Isaac probably not having the best interpretation of him since God instructed his mom to kill him. And though this all does make sense, Edmund has confirmed multiple times that Isaac is the lamb, and I think that the reason that Isaac is the lamb is because in the Bible, when Abraham takes Isaac on the mountain to sacrifice him as commanded by God, an angel swoops in and takes Isaac to safety and leaves a lamb in his place to be sacrificed instead. Game bosses are Isaac. Although this didn't end up happening, Edmund originally wanted all of the bosses to resemble Isaac in some way, and this is still evident in some of them like with the gate, where when defeating him, Isaac is seen hiding behind the boss, and it lives is also meant to resemble Isaac as a fetus. I also very vividly remember Edmund talking about this in a YouTube video, but I literally just can't find it for some reason. Blue Baby is a coprophile. This entry refers to a theory about Blue Baby being a coprophile due to his character, as well as the tainted version, being heavily revolved around feces. And while it's definitely weird, you not only have to remember the type of game Binding of Isaac is, but Blue Baby was also never meant to be a seriously groundbreaking character. I think that the reason he's revolved around feces so much is that Blue Baby is supposed to be a dead version of Isaac, and when people die, they usually void their bowels since the body can't really keep it in at that point, and the other reason is that Blue Baby is kind of meant to be a troll character, initially being a reference to Edmund McMillan's early comics, as well as Blue Baby's unlocks not really being worth the effort that it takes to unlock them either, with the dice items being really the only exception. Chaos Card on Gideon the Chaos card is a card that can one-shot anything in the game with the exception of the Beast and Delirium, unlocked by completing challenge number 9. The card surprisingly works on Gideon, instantly skipping the six stages of the boss and killing him in one shot. Blue Womb Lair The Blue Womb Floor is just the floor that you fight Hush on, also referred to as the Dead Womb Floor. It's unlocked by beating Mom's Heart 10 times, and you can get to this floor by defeating Mom's Heart or It Lives in 30 minutes or less. Blue Key The Blue Key is an unlockable trinket that is unlocked by defeating the Beast with Tainted Cane. The item makes it so that entering a room that requires a key doesn't consume the key, but brings Isaac to a room resembling the Blue Womb, which will always appear in between the rooms that you were trying to go to. This trinket is also probably a reference to SCP-860, which has a very similar effect that puts a forest in between doors, as demonstrated in SCP Containment Breach. Fatty Sprite The Mega Fatty Boss has an unused sprite that looks like this, which resembles the in-game version's portrait in Isaac's will when he dies. Repentance Secret Seeds 
Isaac has quite a lot of special seeds, with the Repentance ones being a G-Fuel seed, which is part of a G-Fuel collaboration with the Binding of Isaac. The seed spawns a G-Fuel item in the starting room of each stage, granting a random gun effect as well as Action Essentials explosions, and the seed also blacklists all of these items. There's also another seed called Super Hot, which makes it so that when Isaac isn't moving, time runs extremely slowly, referencing the game Super Hot. And the last one is a seed called Mode 7, which gives a permanent retrovision effect. There's obviously many other special seeds than these three, but these are the only seeds to be added in Repentance, that is, the only seeds that have been found yet. Skinless Hush. Hush was originally planned to have a second phase, where the boss would become skinless and looked like this, but this ended up getting scrapped, and these are the only existing sprites for what could have been a very different boss fight. The textures are also used in Abortion Birth. Uncle Bob. There's a lot of items in the game related to a character named Bob, so who is he? Many people think that Bob might be Isaac's uncle, or someone related to him, and while I can easily understand why people would think that, Edmund has said on Twitter that Bob is actually the name of Sloth, and that one day he just named the Sloth enemy Bob. Though Edmund has also said that Bob is Isaac's father's brother, and there also exists a transformation named Bob if you pick up three items that have the Bob tag attached to them. Holy Edition. I couldn't find anything directly referencing a Holy Edition, but what I think this entry is trying to refer to is maybe the Unholy Editions of the game released in the UK in March of 2012. And as for these special editions, the Unholy Editions feature a DRM-free copy of the game, a Steam gifting key, an interesting poster, and an art booklet. The second version, called the Most Unholy Edition, was released later in October, and features everything from the previous edition along with the Wrath of the Lamb expansion, as well as the soundtrack included as MP3 files on the game's CD. Story based on Ed's childhood. As the name of the entry suggests, Edmund McMillan grew up around a super-religious family in his own life, and was constantly restrained from making what he wanted to make due to the religiousness of his family. And who better to talk about this entry other than Edmund himself? I thought how cool that would be, like, since I'm doing that too, I'll write about my childhood. And it wasn't as fun. And, <laughs> and I had, I, you know, I had a, a odd religious upbringing where the McMillan side of the family were all born again Christians, hardcore. Um, and then my grandma on my mom's side, she was a uh, super devout Catholic. So it was very ritualistic and mysterious. It always felt like she was doing magic, and lighting candles and all this other stuff. And I wanted to write about how being a creative kid and feeling like such an outcast in my family, uh, mostly due to religion. I remember, you know, constantly being told that, you know, I'm gonna go to hell if I do this. I'm, you know, I shouldn't, I'm evil, you know, I'm bad. What the things that I draw are wicked, you know, that sort of stuff too. So I wanted to write about that. It marries that with ether stuff, where it's like a kid proceeding into his imagination to be safe, but his imagination's full of these terrible things that are, you know, all mirroring himself, like all bad versions of himself um, that are trying to harm him, um, but it eventually becomes strong enough to overcome. Dimension Red. Dimension Red is an unused challenge icon that was probably supposed to be either the Red Redemption challenge itself or perhaps a predecessor to Red Redemption, which involves navigating using the red key. r slash fuck bloat. There is an entire subreddit dedicated to the hatred of the bloat, and I can't say that I blame these people as I also don't love the bloat either, but I wouldn't say that it's my personal least favorite boss, but it's definitely up there for sure. Hidden co-op mode. There is a hidden co-op mode that is currently being implemented into Repentance, and if you type this message into the launch options for the game, then you can subsequently join someone in a co-op game over online play, instead of having them use Steam Remote Play or Parsec. This works by using Steam IDs, and the co-op right now is currently relatively buggy due to mods needing to sync up, as well as it generally not being fully polished as of the time of me making this video. But it being this unpolished is exactly why it's not fully in the game yet. Wormwood Eats Bomb. 
Just like with the boss Chubb, the Wormwood is also able to eat bombs when he charges at Isaac, dealing a significant amount of damage to the boss. Ed Trolling Data Miners Similarly to how I said that the original Lost Unlock method was data mined, Edmund has had his fair share of trolling data miners, with some examples being the Old Man Keeper sprite being put over the Keeper character before it was released, and Skinless Hush was also thought to have been a troll by Ed. It's also worth noting that the Old Man Keeper did replace the Keeper's texture on April Fool's Day in 2016 and 2017. Beta Hush There exists some textures for a beta version of Hush, which really wasn't that different from the version that we ended up getting. The beta design features the texture that we have now, with the only difference being the X's in his eyes, which more closely resemble Blue Baby. Dumplings Dumplings were enemies from the Anti-Birth mod, which never ended up making it into Repentance in their enemy form. Instead, the Lil Dumpy, also from Anti-Birth, was added into Repentance, excluding the Dumpling enemies. Big Boy Bathwater On June 26th, 2021, Edmund made a tweet announcing that Big Boy Bathwater was live on Kickstarter, graciously nodding to someone else who had sold Bathwater two years prior in July of 2019. Yeah, not really much else to say here. Dear Diary Track The Dear Diary Track is a secret song that Ridiculon made for the Afterbirth expansion, and I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Once I thought I had it good, probably mom misunderstood when God came down from heaven and turned the shit up to 11. Orphan Annie had it better. Maybe I should add a letter to my name, call me Fizek. That way the devil won't find me. Tell my mom to stab me, grab me. I wish I had a better fan. Blue Baby Tain Easter Egg. The word Tain in this entry stands for The End Is Nigh, which is one of Edmund McMillan's other games. And if you pick up the ball of tar as Blue Baby, then your appearance will resemble that of Ash, which is the main character of The End Is Nigh. Antichrist Isaac Isaac is made to believe that he is evil, which leads many people to think that he could be the Antichrist in the game's story, and it's totally possible given the amount of information we have about Isaac's confrontations with the devil, as well as how a lot of items in the game change Isaac's appearance to that of a more demonic being. Suicide Note Theory There's a theory involving Dad's note that claims that the note could possibly be a suicide note from Isaac's father, and that this is how he really left the family. Now, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this isn't the case, but I'll leave this one up to interpretation. Lusting of Isaac The Lusting of Isaac is a mod that makes it so that bosses, and many other sprites in the game, take on a more NSFW appearance that I can't really show on YouTube. The Binding of Christmas This entry is referring to a series of two songs similar to the Dear Diary track, and just like with the other song, I'll let this one speak for itself as well. Twas the binding of Christmas, and under the floor, all the creatures were stirring and plotting once more. The TV was tuned to a Christian broad. Keeper ARG. Due to the original unlock method for the lost being discovered by data miners, the Keeper was handled in a much different way, being held behind an update that would only release when the community solved an ARG, and in the case for the Keeper, here's how it all began. On November 12th, 2015, the Steam achievement for Generosity was updated to be a piece of paper with black lines and dots on it. And if you took the number of pixels in each line, it would translate to these numbers, which when converted to ASCII code resembles this, which led to an Imgur link that contained this image. The image contains a picture of the lost, eight human figures, a map icon, and a quote from Genesis 3035. And after some pretty subtle hints from Edmund, the community figured out that this was supposed to be a reference to the movie The Lost Boys. And this then led to clues like the missing poster, and then eventually receiving coordinates to a pile of change on the ground, which when dug up was a statue of greed, with writing on it leading to a Twitter account called I am Isaac's body. And after the community quote, gave him a voice, as hinted by the statue by the tweets on the Twitter account, the developers then posted this image, and only then was the update released which contained the Keeper as a playable character. Tainted Edith Like I talked about earlier, Edith was never implemented into Repentance due to balancing issues, 
but since they were planned to begin with, they would have had a tainted version to go along with them. Tainted Edith probably would have looked something like this, which is from a mod made by Nyx, which shows off what Tainted Edith may have looked like if the character made it into the game. It's also worth mentioning that Tainted Forgotten could also have been what Tainted Edith was going to be, as Tainted Forgotten seems to be a balanced version of Edith. Mutations Mutations is yet another set of songs made by Ridiculon, which sounds similar to the combat versions of the songs already in the game, but put a rather mutated twist onto the already existing melodies. Add player command. By typing the command add player in the repentance console, it will spawn a second character. Come item. This entry pretty much just refers to a joke in the community that talks about how Isaac features pretty much every other bodily fluid, with the exception of one fluid that honestly has no place in the binding of Isaac to begin with. Pumpkin helmet. I'm pretty sure that this entry is actually referring to the pumpkin mask, which was a cut item from the original game that was meant to be dropped by Krampus during the Halloween update, but the item was eventually replaced with the lump of coal instead. The pumpkin mask acts exactly the same as the lump of coal anyway. Fiendfolio ARG Fiendfolio is a massive mod expansion which adds over 500 new enemies, 140 new items, over 48,000 new rooms dispersed between floors, and many more different things. And this mod too had an ARG similar to how the Keeper did, and here's a more simplified rundown of what ended up happening. The developers for the Fiendfolio mod wanted to do something similar to the Keeper ARG, but with their upcoming character Golem, and so sometime in around November of 2020, the developers started hiding breadcrumbs inside of the mod files, and some of the media found has still not actually been solved. This ARG features hidden images, spectrogram ciphers, morse code, clues hidden inside of the rules.txt file, a rail fence cipher, lots of binary, but eventually, the community finally managed to breach the ARG enough to where the developers posted this image confirming that the ARG was completed. And shortly after, the golem was added as a playable character. Dad and Mom Mom's full name is Magdalene O. Moria, which spells out Mom as the initials, but as for what the initials for Dad are, nothing has been confirmed as far as just the initials being a pseudonym for Isaac's dad. Public Entertainment Networked Interactive Software Public Entertainment Network Interactive Software, also known as Penis, is the acronym for the group that was behind the creation of Antibirth. Slow For Me 2 Slow For Me 2 is a secret seed in where the tempo of the music will correlate to the speed that Isaac is moving at. Chubb Dislikes Smoke Chubb Dislikes Smoke is a direct reference to The Legend of Zelda, in which there's a tip that says Dodongo Dislikes Smoke, which is used to defeat the boss with bombs in the same way that you can do against Chubb, as well as the Wormwood. Stage 9C If you type into the console, Stage 9C, it takes you to what seems to be the blue womb floor, but everything with the exception of the boss door is replaced with the basement textures. AS This entry refers to the logo for Adult Swim, and the reason that it's brought up here is because back before Isaac really started taking off as a game, Edmund had put a lot of thought into almost selling the game to Adult Swim for around $50,000. I was originally going to just sell it to Adult Swim for um, $40,000, uh, which is usually one of the higher going rates for like ownership. You just sell it. It's just ownership of a Flash game. And um, I ended up just... The Legend of Isaac. This entry is most likely referring to the fact that The Binding of Isaac as a game took a lot of inspiration from The Legend of Zelda, and Edmund has said more than one time that Zelda was a huge part in shaping the format for the game. And just in case this entry doesn't refer to this, it could also be referring to the Japanese version of the game, which is called The Legend of Isaac in Japan. Void Redesign 
Repentance had originally planned to completely revamp the Void Floor, as well as the Delirium fight, but the developers didn't have enough time to implement it into the new update. I hope that they can make time in the future to finish a Void rework, because I personally think that the Void is in dire need of a redesign. TF2 References Isaac has its fair share of references to Team Fortress 2, including a reference to the Demo Man, Mom's Knife being a reference to Stab Stab Stab, and Skatol, Brimstone, and Tiny Planet were all considered for cosmetic hats in TF2, but Valve dropped the idea, stating that they didn't want players running around with a wet piece of poop on their heads. Greed Mode Alt Path The Rooms folder inside of the game files contains Greed Mode rooms for all of the Alt Path floors, but floors like Gehenna and Corpse are completely missing, so it's assumed to have been scrapped early on in Greed Mode's development. It is worth noting that there is a mod that properly implements the alt paths in, and if you want to experience alt paths in greed mode, I'll leave a link in the description. Magic Fingers Animation In March of 2015, an animation was created by Leather Ice Cream which shows Isaac buying the Magic Fingers item from a shopkeeper, and it gets kind of weird. And if you were to look up what it says to look up in the video, the result is an image that I'm not allowed to show on YouTube. Beast is Bighorn now, while I'm not saying that there's not a resemblance to Bighorn and the Beast, I don't think that Bighorn is the Beast, but rather that Bighorn is at the very least in the same family as the Beast is. Rebirth Launch Trailer On September 5th, 2014, a YouTube channel called James Interactive uploaded a release date trailer for Rebirth, which is probably the greatest trailer I have ever seen in my life. But as good as the trailer is, it might have given birth to a new sleep paralysis demon in the process. Isaac with clothes. Isaac is usually not wearing any clothes in the game, but Isaac can be seen wearing clothes in two of the game's endings, being ending 14 and ending 20. 40 page art book. I kind of mentioned this earlier when talking about the unholy edition of the game, but the 40 page art book is a sketchbook featuring Edmund McMillan's designs for the original Binding of Isaac, and if you're interested in taking a closer look for yourself, I'll leave a link to this book and its pages in the video description. Maggie is not Isaac's sister. It's true, Maggie is not Isaac's sister. And in fact, Isaac has never had a sister at all. Maggie is just Isaac wearing a wig. Blade Strangers Blade Strangers is an old school fighting game released in August of 2018 that actually features Isaac as a playable character in the game. Now I am not at all qualified to talk about fighting games, since I am literally the worst fighting player in the history of the genre, so if anyone can tell me if the character is actually good in the game, then I'd really love to know if it is. Development GIFs If you dig deep enough into Edmund's Isaac blog, then you will find multiple GIFs that show off the game in its early development, like the map display, pause menu, as well as the way that the floor generator works. There's also an entry on this list called Early Rebirth Concepts, but this, along with the 40 page art book, kind of goes hand in hand with this conceptually. Snail Sprite This entry could be referring to either the snail shown off in Leather Ice Cream's How To Sprite video, or it could also maybe be a nod to Randy the Snail from the Fiend Folio mod. Iwata Challenge Every year on December 6th, the Daily Run will feature the appearance of Nintendo's former president Satoru Iwata, who unfortunately passed away in 2015. This challenge is not only present on his birthday, but the challenge also pays tribute to Iwata, starting out with the Game Kit Active item and the Cartridge Trinket. They swallowed a $100 stake in one bite. When the original unlock method for the Lost was ruined by data miners, Tyrone Rodriguez, who is the executive producer for The Binding of Isaac, made a comment in an interview on the Vine Sauce YouTube channel saying that they swallowed a $100 stake in one bite. So my question to you guys is, are there, there's a lot of stuff that still hasn't, hasn't been discovered People yet? People already fucking fucked it up. They all, they They all messed it. They, they, they swallowed a $100 stake with one bite. Yep. Uh. Don't say spoil. <laughs> <laughs> API test videos. Similar to how Rebirth has developer gifts from Edmund's blog, there also exist anti-birth API test videos on YouTube. And as you could probably imagine, these videos were made to test multiple different things for the anti-birth mod. Basilica and Topheth 
Basilica and Topheth were a pair of mock-up floors designed by Not Your Sagittarius that were made as alt floors for Cathedral and Shul. Basilica is a much wider version of Cathedral, with my personal favorite part being the Godhead logo on one of the room floors, and Topheth is a much more hellish version of Shul, which resembles the Mines floor more than it does Shul in my opinion. Unused 24 Unused 24 is a placeholder item pool that only contains one item, with that item being the Sad Onion, and the pool is later overridden after release to be the Ultra Secret Pool. Blue Catacombs I initially thought that this was referring to a drawing that Not Your Sagittarius made, but it's actually referring to how sometimes there's blue spots on the ground in the catacombs floor. Cleric, Fighter, Thief, Mage When creating the early characters for The Binding of Isaac, Edmund modeled them around classic RPG class types, with Maggie being the cleric, Isaac being the fighter, Cain being the thief, and Judas being the mage. Demo Timer In early demo copies of Repentance shown off at places like PAX in 2019, there existed a 10 minute long demo timer in which you could play like normal for 10 minutes, but when the timer ran out, you became the lost, but could still play up until you were killed. Eternal Return my best guess for this entry is that Eternal Return seems to be of a mod that was created back in 2021 with the same name, and from what I can tell, the mod is still not on the Steam Workshop, and from this unlisted teaser that I found for the mod, it seemed like the mod was going to add back the original music, sound effects, and a couple of other things on top of it. The Forest and Basement Negative 1 In early floor sketches for the alt paths in Anti-Birth, there was a sketch of the early floor progression that originally had a forest floor, which would show up after corpse and seemed to be equivalent to dark room and chest, and the basement negative one floor would have been after all three of the last ones. Heretic Mods Unused Enemies The Heretic mod was a mod pack that added over 1700 new rooms, floor overhauls, a new set of characters, and added many new bosses and enemies. But as for the unused enemies in this mod, I unfortunately can't find any of the enemies in question. Fiend Folio was inspired by The Agony of Isaac. The Agony of Isaac was a mod created in July of 2015 that featured an overhaul very similar to that of what Fiend Folio is now. And it's very likely that Fiend Folio was inspired by this earlier mod. There's also a chance that one of the developers of Fiend Folio has outright said that it is inspired by this mod, but I wasn't able to find any of the developers actually saying that. Rainmaker was almost removed. Edmund has said in the past that Rainmaker was originally going to be cut from Repentance due to concerns about how well he would fit the theme of the game. But the boss ended up growing on Ed, and Rainmaker ultimately ended up staying in Repentance. Bambino refers to Gambino. This entry pretty much explains itself, but I don't think that this one is true. I think a more likely connection would be the word Bambino, which is Italian for the word child. And since the word bum is commonly used in the game, that would make a whole lot more sense than it referring to Gambino. Stage 10 in Greed Mode If you type Stage 10 into the console in Greed Mode, it takes you to a dross version of the final floor in Greed Mode, and you can even fight Ultra Greed on the floor if you wanted to. This entry also probably links directly back to the Greed Mode alt path that I talked about earlier. Curse of the Cursed Curse of the Cursed is a real curse in the game, and the only known way to obtain it is if you play the Cursed Challenge, or by playing on the seed that's spelled Cursed with a V. Okay, so the next entry contains a spoiler for the Dead God achievement, so if you don't want this spoiled for you, just go to the timestamp that I have on the screen in the video. Isaac Sings Credits After getting the final achievement in the game, which requires you to get every other achievement, you will not only be rewarded with the satisfaction of having Dead God, but there's a secret ending in which Isaac will actually sing the final credits to the game. If you want to listen to the whole thing, I'll leave a link in the description. Jesus loves you, can't you see? He loves you and he loves me. Jesus loves you, can't you see? The Rune Room The Rune Room was an unused room in Anti-Birth that sort of served as an early version of a planetarium, but I literally can't find a picture of this anywhere. 
Tainted Lazarus is a work in progress. As the name of the entry suggests, Tainted Lazarus is definitely not a finished character. There's some other Tainted characters that weren't fully finished as well, but Tainted Lazarus is one of the biggest examples of this. It's either that or that Tainted Lazarus is finished, and that his gimmick just makes for a difficult character even if he was finished or not. Peeper 2010 Concept Before the Peeper was a boss in the Isaac timeline, a different version of the boss came from not only a different game by Edmund, but early 2010 sketches show early concept of the Peeper as a boss. Also, this entry refers to the Peeper boss and not the item. Curse of the Giant Curse of the Giant is an existing curse from the Anti-Birth mod, but unused inside of Repentance. And if implemented, the curse would basically only give you big rooms, with the exception of things like the spawn room. Isaac and other Nikalis games Nikalis is the developer and publisher for The Binding of Isaac, and Isaac makes many different appearances throughout other games by the publisher. Examples include Blade Strangers from earlier, and another game called Crystal Crisis, just to name two. Brownie Recipe In some of Afterbirth's encoded files, you can find snippets of plaintext at the end of them that are completely random, but one of these included a brownie recipe, as well as including just absolute nonsense in some of the other ones. If someone can try this recipe out, let me know how it goes in the comments. E-Meter In 2016, Edmund made a blog post talking about how Nintendo initially didn't want to port Isaac to their consoles due to the game's religious content, and so Ed made a satirical solution to this on his blog post putting a fig leaf over Isaac to solve the nudity issue, using a dog to replace God, since God spelled backwards as dog, and he also solved the Christian imagery problem by switching the religious sect to Scientology, and introduced an item called the E-Meter, as well as some other minor things that Edmund was obviously joking about the entire time. Slug Boy Peep's original name in the concept art for the game was Slug Boy instead of Peep. Isaac Glitch Hell there was apparently a really old bug that existed in the Alpha Flash version where if you used We Need to Go Deeper and also disabled the game's check for this, then went past the womb, you would be transported into a glitched floor that you wouldn't be able to get out of. You could still fight It Lives, but in a basement-like floor, and beating the boss would end up softlocking the game with no way to progress past it. Voices done by Matthias family. Matthias Bossy, who is the same person narrating in this ice cream meme from a couple years ago, is one of three people in his family to have a voice in The Binding of Isaac, with his wife voicing mom and his son being the voice of Isaac. The Binding of Isaac. Isaac! No, mama, no! <laughs> chest overlay. The chest floor seems to have a visible shadow hovering over it the entire time, with some people thinking that it might be a keyhole, but viewing it in a 2x2 two two room shows that it's actually Isaac's shadow in the chest. Definition The Negative The Negative is a Binding of Isaac rap song created by Definition in June of 2015, and I'm not sure if the song is copyrighted or not, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to listen to the song. Mortis was Morbus Before Corpse, the plant alt floor was going to be a floor called Mortis, and the floor name before Mortis was going to be called Morbus instead. This ended up being scrapped at some point in development, and the enemies and general design was later recycled into being the corpse floor instead. Yeast Folder The Yeast Folder is a folder in the Fiendfolio mod that is just a folder where scrapped enemy and boss concept would be dumped to. It's pretty fun to look through it all. Isaac and Guppy in The End is Nigh Isaac, as well as Guppy, can be found inside The End is Nigh as NPCs that you can interact with. Cesspool the cesspool is a fan-made alt floor that replaces the depths floor, created in March of 2016 by Not Your Sagittarius. The floor reminds me a lot of Dross, and it would have been cool to see this in the official game. Tinted Pots and Mushrooms Tinted Pots and Mushrooms are unused sprites that can be found inside of the game files, and these tinted variants probably went unused due to how easy they would have been to find in the game. Yandere Dev Orb In Fiendfolio, there exists a ridiculously rare I am error room that contains something called a mother orb, which is a 3D animated shape, 
and somebody made a mod that replaces the orb with a series of pictures of Yandere Dev. You are worshipping a sun god. The fortune teller machine has a chance to tell you that you are worshipping a sun god, probably referencing the fact that Roman Catholicism initially derived from a sun-worshipping religion. Raglich, Clutch, Made in the Mist, Cadaver. These four bosses are all bosses that never ended up making it into Repentance. Well, except one. Raglich was a boss that was going to be in the mausoleum, and had the ability to destroy the path on both sides, making him a little harder to kill. I guess that Clutch was unfinished when this iceberg was made, considering that he's recognized as an official boss now. Made in the Mist was a boss similar to Rainmaker that eventually ended up becoming the Min Min boss, and Cadavera was a boss that was probably meant to be in Corpse, but never ended up making it past the development stage. Scrapped Bag Gimmick Tainted Kane's gimmick is that he cannot traditionally pick up items, but instead has to craft them by picking things up with a bag. And the higher quality pickups you have in the crafting, the better the item that you will get would be. Pickups have a quality range from 0 to 10, with things like pennies having a quality of 1, while things like black hearts have a crafting quality of 5, but it wasn't always like this. Edmund said that Tainted Kane's original planned gimmick was that the bag of crafting was going to be used to pick up enemy shots, to then be able to shoot a bigger shot back at enemies, but this never ended up working, so the developers instead went with the crafting idea. Scrapped Salt Shaker Door I talked earlier about how Edith was supposed to be a planned character, but something I purposefully didn't mention is that the game files features an unused tainted door icon that features a salt shaker, which is because biblically, Edith was turned into a pillar of salt for fleeing during the destruction of Sodom. Rule 34 Again, I can't show this on YouTube, but apparently some of the artists for Repentance had at some point drawn Rule 34 of the Binding of Isaac, and I'm just going to take the iceberg's word for it because I'm not looking that shit up. The Pile 2015 The Pile boss can be seen as a mock-up in as early as January of 2015 with these screenshots by Not Your Sagittarius. But as for the portrait part, I don't understand that part. Purpose of the Fez on Judas You've probably wondered at some point as to why Judas has a Fez on his head, and many people think that this is a reference to the developer of Fez, Phil Fish, but that's actually not true. Edmund said on his blog one time that Judas has a Fez because Ed just needed a hat that looked like a wizard hat without actually being a wizard hat, due to Judas initially being a mage like I talked about earlier. Jesus Juice Actual Meaning the meaning behind Jesus Juice is that it's actually a reference to a popular Brazilian drink called Guarana Jesus, which is a purple and pink drink that I'm probably going to have to get when I'm done making this video. However, there's also a good chance that it could be referencing something a little darker than that. Loading Screens Most, if not all, of the loading screens in the game are actually stories that Ed had heard as a child, and this is evident by many different interviews and videos of him confirming this very thing. Clutch is a child's drawing. I wasn't able to find anything suggesting that this is true, but due to the design of the boss in general, this very well could be true. Edmund's Rebalance There's a pretty scary phenomenon where if an item in the game is too overpowered, then an anomalous entity named Edmund McMillan will beam down from the sky and nerf the item until it is no longer overpowered. And with that, we have reached the very bottom.